Previously, we've learned what the first derivative and the second derivative tell us about a function independent of each other. So we've learned that the first derivative tells us whether the function is increasing or decreasing. And we've learned that the second derivative tells us if the function is concave up or concave down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put that together and we're going to look at what the two tell us at the same time. Keep in mind that a positive first derivative tells us that the slope of the function is is positive uh, and therefore the function is increasing uh, might look something like this um, a negative first derivative tells us that the slope is negative and therefore the function is decreasing might look something like this um, a positive second derivative tells us that the function is concave up because the first derivative would be increasing and a negative second derivative tells us the first derivative is decreasing and therefore the function is concave down so we might get something that looks like that so putting it together then if the first derivative is positive we know it's increasing if the second derivative is positive we know it's concave up and so we know that the part of this right here that is increasing and concave up is what the function will look like and we'll get something that looks like that if the first derivative is positive, that means that the function is increasing. But if the second derivative is negative, that means the function is concave down on that interval. And so we're going to have a function that might look like that on a particular interval. If we're looking at an interval for a function where the first derivative is negative, that means that the function is decreasing. And the second derivative is positive, that means that it's concave up then we're going to be looking at this part of the function right here and it might look like that so we know which way it's curving and which way it's going and finally if the first derivative is negative we know it's decreasing and the second derivative is negative we know it's concave down and so we'll be looking more at this part right here where it's concave down and decreasing and it looks something like that we also know because of the second derivative test that if the first derivative is equal to zero we're going to have a horizontal tangent and if the second derivative is negative we know it's concave down and so the point here where the horizontal tangent touches the function that's concave down we're going to have a local maximum and likewise if the first derivative is zero we know it's a horizontal tangent and the second derivative is positive we know it's concave up and so we're going to get this point right here that is going to be a local minimum. So we can take information about the first derivative and the second derivative over an interval or sometimes at a particular point, in this case using the second derivative test, to determine what the function is going to look like over that interval or at that point. What we're going to do is use a chart that looks like this to put that information together and each row here is going to tell us different information about what the graph looks like. Um, the first row what we're going to do is we're just going to pick values for x that, that are important in our function. We're going to pick values like zeros of the function, so where the function itself equals zero. We're going to put critical points in here for our x values and we want to know where these critical points are because they are the places where the function can change from increasing to decreasing and um, and so therefore would be our potential extrema we want to put potential inflection points in here because that's going to tell us where the sorry um, where the second derivative is going to change uh, change signs and might change from concave up to concave down and then we're also going to just look at the intervals between them um, we may include other points if we have a function that's discontinuous at some point we might want to include the point of discontinuity so that we can see what the function is going to do or behave like at that point on the y row um, all we're really concerned about here is the values of y at the particular points that we've chosen for x so what we're going to put in here is y values at the particular x values I'll say given x values um, what we don't really care about here is the y values on the intervals 
So again, with the X's, we're going to put Ooh. points in here, but we're also going to look at what happens between those points. Um, the Y values we really only care about at the points. The first and the second derivative would t will tell us what the function is going to look like between the points. So we don't really need the Y values between the given X values. For the first derivative and the second derivative, all we really care about here is whether they are positive. Uh, in this case, a positive first derivative would tell us the function is increasing. Negative, which would tell us in this case that the function is decreasing. Zero, which might mean that it has a horizontal tangent and it could be a potential maximum or minimum. Or we want to know where it doesn't exist. Um, and this could be for several this could happen for several reasons. It could be a vertical tangent, it could be a cusp, it could be a point of discontinuity, um, and all of those we want to look at more closely, so we're going to include that in our chart here. Uh, same thing for the second derivative, we want to know where it's positive, so we know where it's concave up. Negative, so we know where it's concave down. Zero, so we know where the concavity might change, or where it does not exist. Another place where the concavity might change um, and also might be interesting to us. And finally, in this bottom row, we're going to draw a picture of what the function might look like given the information, whether it's for a point or for an interval between points. So we want to draw a picture of what the function might look like on the interval or at the point. Now, once we get all of this information to a chart, what we can do is transfer it to a graph and get a pretty good idea what the graph looks like without having to use a graphing utility like our calculator. So let's look at an example here. Um, this chart tells us a little bit about a function on the closed interval from negative 1 to 4. Uh, we're going to assume that it's a continuous function and therefore... Uh, well, not therefore, but it's also a differentiable function. We can see the derivative is, uh, is defined here. Um, we have a critical point at x equals 1, uh, where the derivative is equal to 0. So what we know about this function is that, first of all, the left end point is going to be at negative 1, negative 5. It's also going to pass through the point 1, 1, and it's also going to pass through the point 4, negative 2. So we, we have the the locations of the two endpoints and also of the critical point in between. And, and we'll look at what happens here at the critical point a little bit more in depth. Um, the first derivative test tells us that at this left endpoint, we do know that this is going to be a point here at negative 1, negative 5, but we also know that it's going to be increasing as we go to the right of this point. Um, it's going to be not only increasing, but it's going to be concave down. So to the right of the point, it's going to look like this that means that we're going to have a local minimum at this point, at the end point. Um, likewise, if we look at the right end point, we know there's going to be a point here at 4, negative 2. We know that the function is decreasing, or has a negative slope, and is concave down, so we're going to get something that looks like this. It's also going to be a local minimum. Um, just looking at any one point, we don't know if it's a global minimum or a global maximum. Uh, however, we we will be able to tell here um, the only global minimums can come from potential local minimums, uh, which means that negative 5 and negative 2 are potential minimum values, and it's going to turn out that negative 5 is our global minimum. That's fairly easy to check. Um, while we're doing the points, let's go ahead and look at this one here. There's kind of a lot of information here uh, that could be useful. We know we're going to have a point at 1, 1, and Again, this is just going to be a point. It's not an interval. Um, but at that point, we know we have a horizontal tangent. I'll draw that in there. And we also know that the second derivative is negative, which means that the function is concave down. Since the function is concave down, I'll draw this a little bit more dark so we can see it. Um, since the function is concave down at this point, we're going to have a local max at this point. So let me write these in here. We're going to have a maximum there, we're going to have a minimum there, and we're going to have a minimum here. Now again, if we wanted to find global minimums and maximums, we could look at all of the local minimums and see which one has the lowest y value to find the global, 
and we could look at all the local maximums and figure out which one has the greatest y value to figure out which is the absolute or global maximum. Now, on the interval from negative 1 to 1, we want to know what's happening in between negative 1 and 1. We know that the function has a positive first derivative, which means that it's increasing, and we know that it has a negative second derivative, which means that it's concave down. So we know that on this interval, the function's going to look something like that. Between 1 and 4, we know that the first derivative is negative, and the second derivative is negative, which means it's decreasing and concave down, so it's going to look something like this. So now what we can do is we can take this information that we got from the chart and we can draw a picture of what the graph looks like. So we can draw a coordinate plane here. Um, we would probably want to start by putting all the points in. So we have a point at negative 1, negative 5, and I'm not going to be overly precise about this, um, but we have a point here at negative 1, negative 5. Uh, we also have a point at 1, 1, which would be about right here. And we have another point at 4, negative 2, which looks like it would be right about here. Now, from this point, it's just a matter of drawing the picture the way it should look on each interval. We know at the left end point it should be going up uh, from that point, and between negative 1 and 1 it's going to be increasing and concave down. So it's going to look something like this. I also want to make sure that at the point 1, 1, I, I'm going to end up with a horizontal tangent. We can see here that if I draw in a tangent line at that point, it's going to be a horizontal line at this point here. And then from 1 to 4, we can see it's concave down and decreasing. So drawing that part in here, we're going to get something that looks like that. And so the function described by this chart here is going to look something like this. In this example, we do have a local maximum uh, at a critical point here somewhere on the interval. We also have local minimums at the endpoints. Um, we'll look at another example here where just looking at the chart, we, we won't spend as much time on this one, but we can see that the function is increasing across the entire interval which means that at the left end point, we're going to end up with a minimum. So we have a point here, and it's going to be increasing from that point. Um, and at the end point here, it's going to be increasing also. So this is going to give us a max at that point and a minimum at this point. And we shouldn't have any other, uh, any other extrema on the interval because it's increasing from the left end point to the right end point. What is interesting here, though, is the function changes from increasing and concave up right here on this interval, where it's going to look like this, to increasing and concave down on this interval, where it's going to look like this. Since the concavity changes from concave up to concave down, what we're going to get at this point right here is an inflection point. So where the second derivative changes from positive to negative here, we're going to get an inflection point. Again, we can take this information from the chart now and draw a picture of the function uh, and see what the function is going to look like. So if we put a draw a coordinate plane here, um, we know that the point negative 1, negative 1 will be on our graph. We know that the point 1, 4 will be on our graph. And we also know that the point 4, 6 will be on our graph. Uh, might be right about there. And so what we want to look at more closely then is what it's going to look like between negative 1 and 1 and between 1 and 4. Uh, between negative 1 and 1, we know it's going to be increasing and concave up. And from 1 to 4, we know it's going to be increasing and concave down. So we're going to have a smooth curve that looks something like this, and we know the concavity is going to change right here at this point from concave up to concave down. Therefore, this point is an inflection point.